All right, so welcome to episode four of making our block racer game in Godot using C Sharp. So in our last video, uh, we went over making this kind of basic character controller and we made a basic uh, world for ourselves, this playground. And when we did that, uh, we built every, all of these different obstacles in the ground and the goal in Godot. Um, but since we are um, doing a 3D course, I thought I would give a quick uh, overview of how to use a different tool for making these things, and that is Blender. If you're going to do any sort of 3D work, it's a good idea to, at the very least, know a little bit of how Blender works. You don't have to become like an expert modeler um, and an expert <laughs> in Blender, but I absolutely encourage you to at least understand some of the basics because uh, you can create some of your own stuff or if you get blend files from um, other artists you work with or who you hire or just friends of yours, you'll at least be able to know like how to use them and uh, port them from Blender uh, into Godot. So that's what we're going to do today. So first of all, what we're going to do, we're going to open our project file and I am going to create um, just a new folder in there for blender obstacles. And this is where we're going to save our blender file and I'll show you how that is uh, very easy. So to start with, um, when you open blender, it's going to give you this basic cube and a camera and a light. And that's because it's expecting you to do everything in blender. We're just going to get rid of the light and the camera because we're just not going to need them. Now, uh, when, so Blender, if you have never used it before, it's got a lot of functionality and it's kind of difficult to work with uh, if you don't know what you're doing. So in order to move or like to spin the, the view camera around like this, you just hold your middle mouse button and move wherever and it'll be pretty easy. Um, when you start out, it's gonna be in um, object mode. And so you're not really gonna be able to edit this cube uh, if you want to start with a cube, you can make whatever shapes you want. But since for the game, it's a block racer, I think it's good to keep that blocky aesthetic. So let's just go ahead and start with this cube. And let's make, uh, we can recreate some of the obstacles that we made in um, last time. And then we'll make some new ones and it'll be very, very easy. So, um, so if you see Blender says, okay, we're in object mode, that just means we're like looking at the objects and we can just kind of check them out. We can't really mess with them. To go to a mode where we can um, edit them, we're gonna hit tab. And now we're in edit mode and you can see that the edges and vertices have appeared. So if we wanted to just move one vertex, we could hit G to grab it and move it around. Of course, that's not really what we wanna do. Um, so there's three different selection modes. There's vertex select, where you can just select a single vertex. There's edge select, where you can select individual edges. And there's face select mode, where you can uh, select individual faces. Um, and you can, of course, select multiple times. If you just box select, it'll select the ones where if we go into x-ray mode, if you see there's these little dots that appear in the faces, whatever you highlight, um, whatever one of those dots you highlight, it'll select that. And in x-ray mode, you can see everything. It'll let you select the entire shape. So, <clears throat> so let's get out of x-ray mode and let's just make a few basic shapes. So first of all, um, let's make a, just kind of a default um, surface shape that we can use as our platform that we can use to build that sort of long uh, track. So what we can do with just this starting cube, I'm gonna call this, by the way, uh, long and wide. And we're gonna make this 30 meters long and 30 meters wide. And the easy way to do that we just select this first face and all we have to do is hit G to grab and then you can move it in wherever you want. Now, we only want to move it along the X axis at for now. So I'm just gonna hit X and now 
uh, Blender is limiting this to only moving along the x-axis. So if you kind of move your mouse up and down just a little bit, um, it won't uh, get off track. And if you see in the top left, there's uh, numbers counting up for exactly how big we're making this. i try and make it as close to exactly 30 meters as I can. Okay, 30.01, that'll be fine. Now, I can grab this face and do basically the same thing. Now, since we were able to say G to grab and then X, in Blender, uh, as opposed to in Godot, uh, in Blender, the Y axis is the long, like into your monitor, the green axis here. So we're gonna hit Y and then do the same thing. We're gonna go to 30, 30, exactly. Good, and now we're done. So um, I'm going to uh, save this under our YouTube tutorial, Blender Obstacles, and I'm gonna call this uh, Blender Obstacles, save Blender file. Okay, so there's our first obstacle, that's cool. Now, um, let's get out of edit mode because this object is done. Anytime you're done with an object, you wanna get out of edit mode and make a new object if you're going to make a new object. Uh, so we are going to add a new shape. So the way we do that is go up to add mesh and we're just gonna do another cube. And now with this entire cube, we can move the cube, we just can't edit it. So we hit G to grab and then Y to move it along the Y axis. And for this one, I'm thinking, let's just make this one um, sort of like a basic like jump obstacle. So just a long thing just to teach the player, hey, there's gonna be jumping in this game and you're gonna have to do that. So let's click on that and just, let's just say uh, long, or let's say wide. Short. You can kind of name it whatever you want, just as long as, um, makes sense to you and you'll remember what's going on. Okay, so now face select, G to grab, X to uh, set it only to X and we'll go out to 30. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this object and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm just gonna go Control C, Control V, grab Y, put it right there. Now, uh, we can say, edit and what we can do for this object is um, let's make it so that we can um, raise part of it at, up into the air and so that we can make those kind of different segmented um, shapes so what I'm gonna do is hit control R and this gives us what we call a loop cut you can see this little yellow square that has appeared and we can't move it around yet because we have to click first once and then we can put it wherever we want or if we want it dead center you can just hit escape and it'll be right there um so this actually gives us sort of two um rectangular prisms if you want but what we're gonna do is make several different shapes out of this one starting thing so i'm gonna go control r and I'm, if you use your mouse wheel you can change how many loop cuts to give it and I'm gonna give it six loop cuts. And I moved it, I want it to be centered, so I just hit escape. Now, what I'm gonna do is take this one object, I'm gonna hit this tab and go back to object mode. I'm gonna make um, one, two, three, four, I think, copies of it. So one, two, Uh, why? Okay, so one, two, three, four. I think that's going to be it. Uh, let's call this um, far cut out. Say this is one out. This is two out, and I think this will end. Out. All right, so go back into, well, collect, select this one, the far cutout, 
And what this is going to be, I'm just going to leave this one blank, but I'm going to have these other ones raise up into the air. So I'm going to go to face select mode and just select each of these faces. Now, um, what we want to do is have just one really big tall wall and um, leave everything else or leave this one face down. Now we've already learned about grab, but if we grab, it's gonna do this like angular thing. That's not what we want. What we wanna do, is we hit E to extrude. And by default, it's in the direction that faces, fa uh, the face is already facing. It already locks it in. We don't have to hit uh, Z. And we're just gonna make this 20 meters tall. So. Gonna do it too perfect. We'll just do it right there. Okay, out of edit mode, go to our next one, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing except one segment over. So I'm gonna grab each of these, E, up to 20, 19.9, good. Tab to get out of edit mode, select the next one in object mode, tab to get back into edit mode, select these two, and then these four, E up to 20. Okay. And out of edit mode, select the next one. E, one, two, three, skip one, two, three. E up. All right, so there's some good obstacles. Now, um, now we have these extra loop cuts and sometimes uh, when we're moving between different things it can get confusing and also for games um, you don't want extra vertices so what we can do now is just get rid of the loop cuts so the easy way to do that we're going to go into edge select mode and if you hold alt and click it'll select the entire loop uh, blender's going to try its best to select the entire loop and we can multi-select by holding alt and shift and then just selecting each of these okay so if we take a look over there and below we just want to make sure all the stuff that we want gone is in orange and we can do this one right here uh, well let's do this one right here and we want to make sure that this edge is not going to get dissolved and it's not in that one. All right, so now we've got all the edges that we want to dissolve. And all we have to do is hit Control and X and they just disappear. So now we have this really nice clean shape that's hopefully not going to get misinterpreted. So let's do the same thing for this one. So we're in object mode. We hit tab to go into edit mode. Uh, Alt shift to select and make sure that that edge there doesn't get selected. These two as well. Again, make sure those inner edges don't get selected. This one too, that one, that one, that one, that one. Roll X and they're gone. Tab to get into object mode, select the next one. Tab to get into edit mode, same process. These are close together, so it's kind of hard to see. Make sure that we're not selecting those inner edges, because that would be bad. Okay, Control X, they're gone. One more time. Same deal. Face. Okay. There. These two. These guys down here. Good. So, got what we want. Control X. Now it's just good to kind of take a double check, make sure nothing's gone. Now we're going to save. Cool, so that's a good starting point. Um, now let's go back into object mode. Let's take this and let's have some fun. So let's create um, a real long skinny ground. So let's hit just control C, control V, grab Y, move it back here. 
into edit mode. Let's just go into face select, like this face. Grab X. Let's just make it like then like this. And then this face. Grab X. And like that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this up against there for reference because I kind of want it the same width as that. So grab Y. And I want it up in the air, so grab put that at 1.5. Grab Y, so it's right there. And take a look at it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to go... Uh, Actually, yeah, let's do this right. There. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay. I just want this to match up because what I'm going to do is I can either use this on my ground and make it like a different ground. Um, Actually, let's go grab Z. Let's put it back to uh, row. So that we can put it on the ground or in Godot, we'll be able to raise it up to a different level. Um, that one. Okay. Oh, yeah. And so let's put this at 90. All right. So... This is the start of a pretty good set of obstacles, and we've got our ground. So, um, so we've saved this, and we saved it in our project directory. So here's what's kind of cool about this, is if we open up Godot, it's going to say it's re-importing assets, because it's realized now, oh, hey, there's a new file, and here's these Blender obstacles. This is the folder I created. Here's our Blender obstacles.blend. I'm going to create a new scene, and I'm just going to call this, um, I'm just going to drag this right in. Oh, no, I can't do that. Uh, new thing. Um, we're going to say Blender Obstacles. Same exact thing. Just drag this right in. There. there it is. Here's all our obstacles. Now, right now, Godot is treating this as one monolithic object, and we can't change the shapes. We can't interact with them. Um, we can't modify them in any way. So what we have to do is hit this little movie director, like clapper thing. And it says open in editor. And then it'll say, okay, this was automatically imported. So you can't change it to make changes. You have to have an inherited uh, scene. We're going to say new inherited. And here's our new scene. And now each of these objects is individually on its own. And fortunately for us, it's named the exact same thing. Oh, and that's, uh, we forgot to change the name of that over here. That here, we can say long and narrow. Let's see if Gitto realizes what we've just done. I think it, oh yeah, it does. Okay. So, what we can do now, we have all these shapes, but we don't have colliders for them. Um what we can do is just select each mesh and then you see this mesh button appears in the menu up top and we just say create tri mesh static body. So what this does is it adds a static body and a collision shape that matches our uh, mesh. And you can see when we did our box shaped colliders, it was just a box shape. Now it's doing tri mesh, so it's doing triangles, which is more typical for 3D modeling. Um, so that's fine. We, it's just done automatically for us. So that's good. That's what we want. So let's do that for each of these.
Okay. So now we have colliders for each of these and we have static bodies for them. Now we're gonna do, what we're gonna call this is, um, we're gonna put this in Blender Obstacles and we're gonna call this, um, yeah, just Blender Obstacles dot scene. Sure. Now, one more thing we have to do, we're gonna do scene export as mesh library. Put that right in here as well. Um, I'm just gonna say blend, yeah, Blender Obstacle Mesh Library. And I'm going to say save. Okay, so now what we've done is we've created a library of meshes that we can reference in a different object. Specifically, let's save this as um, Blender, Blender Obstacles Master. Okay, or we could call it imported, you can call it whatever you want. But, um, so we don't need this scene open anymore, so we can close it. Uh, we can close that, let's open. Um, now what we're gonna do, actually, let's down here create a folder and call it levels. Okay, this is where we're gonna store our actual levels for the game. The playground is just so we can sort of mess around and see what happens. We can play with settings and do whatever. Here, we're gonna actually make a level. So we're gonna go level one. And let's save it in levels as level one scene. So we don't have anything yet. What we wanna do in order to use our mesh library is go add child node and grid map. Okay, so a grid map, if you see, there's this like yellow grid that has appeared and there's a mesh library reference up here. What we want to do is load our mesh library, which is right there in Blender Obstacles mesh library open. And now Godot has conveniently separated each of our meshes into individual pieces. So if we wanted to make what is effectively the same thing as our playground, we can just select this long and wide. And we'll just put it there, put it there, put it there. And you can just do this as many times as you want. If you wanted to, you could make one that's really, really, really long in Blender and just have that as sort of a base and that would be fine. All right, so now we've got a pretty decent um, track. Now in our first lesson, or I'm sorry, in our last video, we did sort of these um, sideways or these, you know, like having these uh, things to the side. So we can put that, oh, I guess it didn't put it up top, but here's what we can do. So right now uh, there's no, like we left in a sort of jump thing. We don't have that right now, but if we go up to floor one, it'll be there. So we can put that back there. And then we can put like a middle out one here. And I suppose we would need like a, a right side one as well. I thought we might be able to rotate these, but I don't, oh yeah, we can. Um, I forgot. So. As you're placing things, you, Godot gives you the ability to spin things around by hitting S. And you can, S will rotate around the Y axis. If you hit A, it'll actually rotate around the X axis. And if you hit D, it rotates around the Z axis. So we can reuse these things. And actually, let's go. If you hold shift, you can box select. And then if there's something you don't want anymore, you can just delete it. So we're just gonna recreate that first scene um, from last time. We're gonna do that S, put it right here. And what's really cool is because you can rotate, um, if you wanted to, you could make this part of the ground and have like a sort of treacherous, um, uh, like, cut out in the ground and do whatever you wanted to. 
Um, we might need to change that down to floor zero. You can see it's there. Uh, or we could space it apart so that we have to have a jump. Um, it's up to you. So let's do, let's just put one of these on because um, it would be kind of fun. Oops. All right. There. So you can see that using this grid map makes creating the level really, really fast. Uh, and it just makes it very easy. Um, so now we're not done with the level. First of all, we need to put our player in it. Uh, so let's drag the player in. Oops, it's this player script, player scene. Let's make the player start where we want. There. So now our player's right there. Now let's just go ahead and test this scene. So we haven't made it the, the main scene. If we were to hit play, it would just jump to our playground. Um, so let's say run current scene. And, ooh. Oh, <laughs> we, we can't see very well because the, we don't have any world lighting yet. So let's do that. Let's say add child node, uh, light, or not directional light. I'm going to do light. Light, I think is the light. Yeah, sun. Okay, so go there. We're going to show how to dress our levels up. Uh, in a later video to make them pretty. But for now, hopefully this will do. Oh, and I just saw that this is off a little bit. Okay. But at least we can see. Oh. oh, and we're not jumping quite high enough to make it over that. We can fix that in our code. Jump. Day eight. We might want to scale our player up just a little bit. All right. So now we can make it over that jump. There we go. Uh, we still need to add... Um, That's a little better. Okay, but you can see that this is a pretty easy, fast way to make levels. And if you were making something more like a 3D shooter, um, um, you know, first person shooter, and you wanted to put like, you were making a building, you could put this on like floor 10, uh, would have like multiple floors and um, you could add stairs between them, you know, whatever else. But for our game, we're just going, you know, straight down the line. There we go. So then all we would have to do now um, is add our goal. So we can add area 3D um, all the way down to the goal. Oops. Right here. Then we can add a collision shape. Collision shape 3D. Add a box shape. And what you can do is make a goal scene. Uh, and we'll, we can actually make that, you could even make it in Blender, uh, make like a thing that actually looks like a goal. Um, So I think I'll do that, but you can do that um, as part of making your uh, 
levels using Blender or just right in Godot. Okay, so there's our area. Let's say this is full. Remember our node, body, and third. Okay. Perfect. Pretty done. Now let's run this one more time. Test it out. Need to start in the middle, not way over there. Okay, so that would have been a death. Lighted. This is really, really slippery. Okay, and it says we won. Cool. So, um, so for next time, uh, either prepare a bunch of levels, um, either just purely in Godot like we did last time, or using Blender, um, and think about what other shapes and obstacles you might want to create, and just have fun with it. Make as many as you want. Um, and if you, if you just keep updating things and adding things, you can just keep going with it. Um, or you can make separate libraries if you want like different themes for different levels, or you could have like one theme for one world that has several levels and a different theme for a different world that has other levels. Just, you know, uh, this is kind of where you get to let your creativity run wild. So, um, create a bunch of levels and then remember to use this run current scene button to test them out as opposed to um, your, uh, as opposed to this, we're going to show how to connect the levels um, and transition between them next time. Um, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next